that noise, please. What is Julia doing here? Ben, come on. She just wanted to show you that she's not harboring any ill feelings. Come on, she's, she wanted to come. Yes, I wanted to come. Weddings always make me so happy, <laughs> especially when the couple's so much in love. Now, look, I don't know what's going on here. Mr. Myers, would you like to step over here next to the bride, wow. please? Dan, I think he needs you over there. Yeah, Dan, come on. They're ready to start. Well, we're not going to start until I'm ready to start. <sighs> See, Ben, I told you we shouldn't have told him. Now Nancy's going to be upset. Oh, Nancy upset? This Dan, is a great is time wrong? to tell... No, Dan, <laughs> thy love awaiteth thee. Would you, sh would you shut up, please? Nancy, why don't we go into the kitchen? What's going on? Look, Nancy, it's nothing. It's before the marriage jitters. It's, it's you know, we'll just take a breather, and then we'll come back to all this in just a few minutes. Oh, Juliet, oh, Juliet, wherefore art thou thy penniless yet crafty one? Would you shut <laughs> up? What is this about Nancy dropping the lawsuit? Dan, I probably shouldn't have told you. I mean, it's your wedding day and all, but come on! Ben, get the women out of the kitchen. Let's get started again, huh? No, no, you you hold it right there, Martin. And we're not going to start anything until I get to the bottom of this. Now, I want to know what's going on. Going someplace? What are you doing here? Well, it looks as if I've come to say goodbye. Uh, look, Weaver, I've got a lot of work to do, so just uh, leave me alone, yeah, will Yeah, well, I'm sure you've got work to do. But where? Look, I've had a long day. I'm gonna go home, fix myself a drink, and try to relax and read some of these specs, okay? Oh, wow, that's funny. Spoke to your secretary this morning. She says you're going out of town. Indefinitely. Uh, ben, uh, is everybody just about ready to start out there again? No, not quite. Is everything okay in here? No, I want to know what's going on. Nancy, you're not going to let Dan's nervous energy spoil your wedding day, are you? Well, no, it's just not every day that a girl gets married. Please, Dan, look, now I realize I probably shouldn't have told you about this, I mean, it being your wedding day and all, but... You just cut the garbage, Hughes. Now, what is this big secret that everybody around here is in on except me? Hey, look. It wasn't my idea for Nancy to drop the lawsuit, okay? Uh -huh. Yep, she thought it all up all by herself. <laughs> Julia, please. Oh, don't you be telling her what she can say and can't say. That's right. Only Dan has the authority to do that. <laughs> I don't like your mouth any more than he does, but I am interested in what you know about this. All I know is what a little birdie told me. He said, Go to the Davidson's house, and there you will find a little bird friend of mine. Um, he's easy to spot. He's the turkey in the brown suit. <laughs> you got about as much class. Listen, I think the bride's about ready. How does it look in here? All right, look, everybody, let's just stop. Uh, I'm uh, getting a little tired of these little games. You know, and frankly, I'm just not buying the whole thing, okay? What are you talking about, Dan? Oh, come off it, Martin. I mean, what do you take me for? Did you... You really expect me to believe this little charade about Nancy dropping the malpractice suit? You know, you're right, Doug. I shouldn't have brought it up. Listen, Dan, I'm sorry I should have let Nancy tell you herself. Yeah, Dan. Why don't you bring her down here so that we can all see how you're going to marry her for love and not money? <laughs> well, that's why I'm here anyway. Gee, you just shut your mouth. <laughs> testy, testy. <laughs> Listen, seriously, now, if this concerns you that she's dropping the lawsuit, maybe you should go in and talk to her. Please, don't let us stand in your way. Yeah, Dan, go right ahead, listen. That way we can get right on with the wedding. We won't keep all these lovely people waiting. <laughs> Gene, I think you're out of your mind. 
I just think there's some interesting facts that aren't resolved yet, Harold. Like what? Well, it's like I told Brubaker. Why does Stacy remember Kate falling one way after she fired the gun if the body was found pointing another way? You don't go crawling around with a bullet in your heart for crying out loud. I'm sure there's some reasonable explanation for Maybe that. Maybe there is, but then you explain this to me. If Stacy had the gun in her hand when she ran out of Amber's apartment building, then why were there fingerprints from both of her hands on the panic bar? Look, I got talked to Brubaker about that. She could have just stuck the gun down in her purse. Uh, yeah, but see, that makes it even more difficult for the thing to fall out in the parking lot. Gene, I think uh, uh, you've got too much heart in this thing. Your head's uh, taking a vacation. Well, what is that supposed to mean? It just means that your personal bias in favor of Stacy is affecting that newspaper man's uh, objectivity that you're so known for. Oh, come off of it, Harold. You know what I think? Now that you've gotten Dave off the hook, you don't care who the murderer is. Now, that's not fair. You know I do. It is. But some of your theories are a little far-fetched. Far-fetched. You know, if my assumptions pan out, I... Are you afraid that you might find yourself defending Dave again? Oh, no. No, no, no. That's double jeopardy. Man cannot be tried twice for the same crime. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. Well, why is it that I get the feelings that there's a bunch Let of... Let me tell you something about here. feelings, Gene. Don't trust them. You, look, when you're talking about legal things, you got to stick to the facts. Facts, facts, that's just the facts, nothing else. You know something? You're starting to sound like that crazy woman lives next door to Amber, the one that keeps saying she had two shots all along. That little lady that spoke in nursery rhyme? Yeah. Oh, oh, no, Gene, don't do that. Hey, Brubaker didn't take her seriously either. Nobody could. Well, you know, I think I'm beginning to, buddy. Where are you going? I'm going to go talk to Mrs. Looney Tunes. Maybe she can shed some light on this silly theory of mine. Hey, Gene, Gene, I didn't expect to see you here. Well, I can't talk now. I've got to run something's up. Harold, I'll be talking to you. See you guys. Now, what was all that about? You better sit down. I'll try to explain it to you. Well, my secretary was wrong. She must have got my leaving confused with an out-of-town business trip I've got next Don't week. give me that. Don't give you what? I told you I have to go home and do some work. You always take your appointment book home when you uh, go to read Specskill? Just leave me alone, will you? I can't. At least not until you tell me why haven't you seen Stacy yet. What's it to you? Plenty. She's a friend of mine. And I thought she was more to you. She doesn't think you're going to show up, Gil. Well, tell her not to hold her breath. I've got my own life to live, you know? <laughs> yeah, you can be a real nice guy sometimes, Prescott. You know that? Oh, well, I'm sorry. I've got a lot on my mind. Like how to explain to my family that I almost married a murderer. Is that where you're going? All right. All right. I'm going to see my dad in North Carolina. I'd like to talk to him. Happy now? Gil, she's in prison. I know that, Weaver. You don't have to tell me that. As a matter of fact, you don't have to tell me anything. Why don't you just get out of here? You know something, Gil? I think you're mad at me because I care for Stacy the way that you know you should. Well, it's a lot easier to go visit a friend than it is a lover. You mean a fiance? Or doesn't that title still fit? Go on, Dan. Go on and talk to her. Look, if it's that important to you, to know whether or not she dropped the lawsuit before you marry her, then by all means, please, go on and talk to her. Yeah, Dan, uh, go right ahead. Listen, I'll tell you what. I'll go get her myself. No. Nancy, you've got to let him go. You told him something, didn't you? You all told him something. What'd you say to him? Nancy, I know you're very upset now, but it's best that it worked out this way so that you could realize something. I don't know what's going on here, but uh, are my services still needed? No, I'm sorry. Um, here. Lori, why don't you uh, go into the kitchen and finish explaining this? Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Come on, Aunt Nancy. Ben, I've got to run along, so I'll show this gentleman to the door. I sure wish I could have had this on film. It was a classic. <laughs> Julia, uh, something you should know. Nancy didn't drop the lawsuit. What? You mean this all was a hoax? 
<clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid so. <laughs> and it worked. I mean, he changed colors faster than a chameleon on an automobile. <clears throat> we did it. <laughs> yeah, we sure did, didn't we? Uh, no, hold it, no, hold it, hold it here. You mean to tell me that you did all of this so that Nancy could see what Dan is made out of? Yeah, something like that. Uh -huh. Well, I'll be. <laughs> well, I salute you, gentlemen and ladies. <laughs> My cup of envy has now been filled. <laughs> what? Well, let me put it like this. It's sure good to see someone who plays with fire finally get burned. But I'll tell you this. I sure hate to be the one to have to explain this to Nancy. Remember when, when I asked you to give me the chance to prove Dan's real character? Well, we have proved it. He is no good, Nancy. He was taking advantage of you. You've got to see that now. That still does not give you the right to do what you did. Nancy, I know that it doesn't even seem like we're your friends right now because this truth is, is hurting you. Listen, in Proverbs, there's a verse that says, Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. Dan's kisses would have turned sour. Now, he was deceiving you just as we plainly saw in there a few minutes ago. Look, I, I know that you're hurting. But the wounds that we have caused are because we truly are your friends. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. I gotta get out of here. I just can't stand being around you anymore. Lori, let her go. There's nothing we can do now. Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess she does need to uh, think it through on her own for a while. But after she has slept on it, I still think I need to talk to her. Gene thinks somebody else killed Kate? Yeah, well, that's his theory, but uh, he's missing some important evidence, like the second bullet and a few other things. I don't think I'd put too much stock in that if I were you. Yes, but if that's true, that means that Stacy could get out, couldn't she? Well, I don't know, Dave. Uh, it's, it's a little early to speculate on that kind of thing. <laughs> well, but thanks for telling me about it, Harold. Uh, I think I'll sleep better tonight. Oh, uh, but uh, th that's, not, uh, that's not why I asked you to come over here. Well, what is it? Uh, Kate's will's been read. Uh, and uh, there are a couple of bequests in there for you. Not oh. very much, but... Uh, I didn't expect anything from them. Oh, here. Uh, read the list. One thing kind of caught my eyes. kind of interesting. What's that? Well, this item number five here. The Dar Salon Bible? Yeah. Now, why would she leave me that? Well, I don't know. It, uh, apparently, she rewrote her will uh, near the tail end of your reconciliation attempt, and I guess she thought that would be an appropriate gift for a man of faith. But how did she get a hold of it? Oh, I don't know. I don't have any idea. don't know how much she paid for it or where she got it or anything. But it's worth a fair amount of money. And see the appraisal right here? Worth $5,000. Wow. There you be a good young lady now. We're going to have company. Uh, who is it again, please? Jean Redland with the Kingsley Chronicle. Oh! oh. Welcome. Yeah. Come, come in. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, oh, you'll have to excuse my friends. They got in an argument earlier this morning and they've been feuding. Friends? Oh, yes. Oh. Orlando, you behave yourself. Mercy me, he is one of the troublemakers. I've half a notion to send him up to the roof. To, to the roof? Oh, yes. They hate it up there. But sometimes drastic measures must be taken. Oh, uh, uh, oh uh, could I get you something to drink? We were just about to sit down to a oh. cup of sarsaparilla. No, 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 ma'am, that'll be fine. Um, I just stopped by to ask you a, a couple of questions about uh, Kate Crothers' murder. I have said everything that there is to be said. Well, ma'am, I was down at the station and I talked to Detective Brubaker. You have just struck a sour note with me. Why, I twice I have tried to give my plea to that uh, Brubaker detective, and both times he laughed and scoffed and said that my witness was a bit off. Well, personally, I'd say that he is the one that's 
interested. <laughs> yeah, ma'am. Well, I think he was just simply trying to explain to you... And another thing. Yes, ma'am. Do you know that during that entire trial, not once, not once, mind you, did they call me on that witness stand? And my friend and I, why, why we're the only ones that heard the two shots. Oh. Well, you know, ma'am, there never was any support to the two-shot idea, and uh, I don't know that they could really go, you know, by the witness of your friends. And the fact that you have these friends, uh, Mrs. Schmidt, might cause a little doubts in the minds of some of those who are less imaginative, you know? Friends, friends, what is a friend? A friend is hard to find. But there's one friend that's always true. It's the friend that's in the mind. Oh. Hey, that's, uh, that's, that's really a nice poem. I wrote that's... it myself. Oh, <clears throat> I'm sure you did. Uh, now, can you explain to me exactly what you saw that night, what went on? Well, like I told that Brubaker fellow, uh -huh. I heard a man yell, booze, his selection. And then the second shot was fired. Pierre, if you mouth off to her one more time, there'll be no warm bath for you tonight, and I mean it. Oh, honestly, I'm sorry, but sometimes it's just tough being a mother to so many. And now you were saying... Uh, yeah, we were talking about the murder. You say you heard two shots. Now, after the two shots, uh, did you investigate at all? Oh, definitely. I, I put Sherlock on it right away. Sherlock. Sure. Oh, I... I take it you mean Sherlock Holmes? Oh, heavens no, don't be silly. Sherlock Holmes has been dead for years. I mean my own Sherlock. Oh. Why, yes. Why, we both stood right by the door and we saw the man leave. I can tell you all about him. Really? Look, Russ, I just don't know where I stand with Stacy right now, okay? Is that what you want, a confession? What, do I look like a priest? Well, with your air of righteous indignation, you sure fooled me. I don't know. I, I, I just got to get out of here. I need some time to think. I, I, I feel like I don't have any control over my life. I feel like I'm in a box. I just, I just have to get out. Like running away, maybe like uh, Stacy tried to do before she was cornered into confessing? Look, this may sound weird, but I'm... I'm not trying to run away from Stacy. I just need some time to think. What do you mean? What are you talking about think? I can't think here with Stacy over there in prison. You can understand that, can't you? Understand? Understand, understand what? Understand that she's sitting over there in a jail cell while you're ready to shuffle off to visit Daddy? No, I don't understand that. Look, you're not making this any easier. I feel guilty enough as it is. I did go over there to try to see her, but... I left. Oh, don't before. go crying on my shoulder. I'm huh? not crying. I just need somebody. Just drop it, okay? Just drop it. No, I can't just drop it's it. It's my problem, all right? That's right, pal. It is your problem, and you're not facing up to it. Well, I'll handle it the best way I know how. Oh, he promises a lifetime of love, and he can't hang on for four weeks. Is that how you handle it, Gil? Look, Weaver, we're talking about a girl that's going to face a life sentence No, here. we're talking about a guy who's going to betray that girl without betting an eye. That's what we're talking betrayal? about. Betrayal? You want to talk about betrayal? How long does she go before she let me know that she killed her mother? What's that got to do with anything? Everything! I'm the one that had to be up there on that stand. I'm the one that had accusing fingers pointed at me in this murder. You think she would have come forward if I got convicted of this thing? <laughs> no way. She even let her own father get tried for it. She would have sat back happily and let me get fried for it. So is that, is that it? Look out for number one. Is that, is that the name of the game? <sighs> yeah, right. You got it. I'd just like to take a little bit of time and think about marrying somebody that killed their mother and who's going to have to spend a life in jail for it. I'll be sure and relay that message to Stacy next time I see her. Or you can. That is, if you get enough guts to face her. You can describe the man you saw come out of Miss Phillips' apartment the night of the murder? 
Oh, yes, exactly. The hallway was dark. For it was late at night. Uh -huh. But I remember him well, for in his eyes there was fright. He was afraid. Oh, naturally. Terribly. Well, uh, Mr. Schmidt, his mental state doesn't help me any. I need more of a physical description. Oh, why, certainly. Would you like Sherlock to tell no, you? No, no, uh, that's, that's fine, really. Uh, but Sherlock saw him, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he did. But uh, can you describe him to me? Describe him more. Well, uh, he looked exactly like yeah. the knave of hearts. The knave of hearts? Yes, the knave of hearts. You know, the knave of hearts who stole the tarts. I mean, surely you know that. You remember... Oh, come now. Would you like me to tell you the story? Uh, yeah, I was hoping for a little bit more detail, ma'am. But that's exactly what he looks like. The knave of hearts. The knave of hearts. Isn't that a fairy tale figure? Fairy tale? The very idea. No. Oh, well, ma'am, I'm not saying that he's not a real person or anything like that. I'm just... Um... Never mind. Suppose you're going to treat me now like that Sergeant Brubaker no, fella. No, ma'am, I'm not. I, I have no doubt at all. I'm sure that this man looked just like the Knave of Hearts himself, you know. But it's just that, well, see, ma'am, my editor, well, he wouldn't buy it. And, uh, frankly, not to mention a jury. Thank you.